Hey folks, really tough topic today. A lot of you just back from New Year's, so we'll keep it short. Over the weekend, there were two articles that caught my attention. One was a report by ProPublica, the public interest uh, journal uh, that took a look at 40 or so complaints made to Facebook about inappropriate content. And Facebook, after reviewing, conceded that um, the responses of the Facebook moderators, many of them were wrong according to Facebook's own guidelines. They should have taken it down or they should have not taken something down. The other article that caught my attention was a big article on the Wall Street Journal uh, that looked at the challenges of the people who were doing this moderation at Facebook, at Google, at other uh, places where um, moderators review posts to make sure that people who are doing things that are abusive, um, those posts are removed. I helped manage this policy for six years or so at AOL. At the time, we had the largest community, and we worked really hard. We had thousands of people in Oklahoma City, in the Philippines, in Israel, in different countries where we had um, employees or very often contractors who could expand, fill the volume needed. Uh, you know, you can imagine during a particular uh, show streamed online, during the Super Bowl, during any major event, you could have these giant spikes. Uh, you need people sometimes with niche uh, ability to speak different languages if your service is available in many languages. And these people had to spend their days reading thousands and thousands of posts, some of the most offensive things you can imagine that people post. They had to, you know, look at uh, child porn, um, bigotry, incredibly offensive, um, anti-religious, anti-women, uh, you name the ugly thing, there's someone out there um, arguing about it or, or jabbing uh, back and forth. Many of those folks, we trained them, we gave them our policies, they did as best as possible, but gosh, put you in a room where this is what you look at for eight hours a day, uh, and where the only context you have is perhaps a little bit of information before and after. You cannot read a long string of messages of hundreds and hundreds to uh, understand whether, well, what this person said in this context was okay or um, in this context was uh, offensive. And so you can imagine the accuracy here is a challenge. We would routinely audit uh, and then see that many of the moderators uh, were uh, still falling short of where we wanted. Let me give you a sense of the complexity of, of some of this. Um, we would set a policy, for instance, saying that you could not use a term like Kike, offensive term for Jew. Uh, dyke, once an offensive term, sometimes an offensive term, depending on who's saying it and how it's being used, right, for uh, a lesbian. Uh, so we'd ban those terms saying, well, those are bad words. And then times would change, and um, sometimes people would use these terms, uh, and we'd take them down, and they'd say, what are you talking about? I'm talking about being a proud dyke. I'm a member of the group Kikes on Bikes, and we, we uh, we, we ride our bikes to Washington on Memorial Day. We're proud veterans who are all Jewish. And we, we tell the moderators, okay, um, if those terms are used in positive, self-referential ways, then don't take it down. And, wow, does that get complicated uh, because of the context that suddenly needs to, to be there. And again, you've got this happening in different cultures. Maybe it is acceptable to use a certain term. Uh, it's not a hateful thing to do. Maybe in a certain group, right? We all know uh, uh, groups uh, where it's okay to use pejorative terms within that group. If you are a member of that group, you use uh, a certain language, which would be highly offensive if used by somebody of a different race, somebody of a different religion, somebody not in that group, right? And so consider the complexity of this sort of job. You say no nudity. So you've got people looking for uh, uh, for, for uh, fully exposed breasts and they're seeing all kinds of inappropriate content and they're taking it down because people have reported it. Remember, if someone said, this is wrong, I don't want this here, it's reported, and then someone takes down a breastfeeding photo because they didn't appreciate the context or maybe it was posted in some context, some group, uh, in a way that was intended to be 
uh, a challenge uh, to those people. And so they reported it even though it's not an inappropriate piece of content. It is a giant mess out there and it can be incredibly hard. I was just um, in a group that I belong to. Uh, it's a group of Orthodox Jews that are not fond of the current administration and find it very frustrating that other religious people uh, are somehow enthused. And so this is a very self-selected group of several thousand people. You would think like this niche of people maybe all think alike and have the same norms. And the moderators had to intervene today and boo out somebody who fit into that mold, was you know, an observant uh, Jew, unhappy with uh, Trump, but who was offended and who then offended people who then offended each other back. And the moderators had to step in uh, and boot one member from the group and say, hey, this isn't uh, appropriate. Take a look at that and then imagine what happens when you put this out on the entire uh, web uh, and you have large groups and general audiences. In any case, certainly um, a challenge for Facebook and Google and others to do a better job. Um, the training, um, the experience of these moderators, and again, it is hard to do this 10 hours a day, 8 hours a day, you've got people working from home. Um, it can be a good job for somebody working at home. You've got a, a homebound kid, you've got a disability, you, you uh, for whatever reason, I need to work remotely, and so you log on and you go into your queue and you get remote training and you bring in people and then you audit and you try to get their skills better. But I think Facebook is eventually going to have almost 20,000 people working on this. But frankly, if you had Supreme Court clerks who were experts and who were civil libertarians and who had exposure to the sensitivities of every uh, affected audience, you would still have furious debate over whether or not particular comments and particular claims uh, are offensive. Uh, we've all said things uh, that might be inappropriate um, and um, what's the solution? Well, the solution can be upping, uh, deleting more, being much more aggressive, having a zero tolerance policy. Um, and imagine how heavy handed that would be if any time someone said something that others found offensive, it was immediately taken down and then maybe could be put back later. Getting that balance right that still lets most of us have their say um, and removes the most offensive content, a true challenge. So technology is being developed. Um, again, being able to capture those contexts that I talk about. Artificial intelligence is not yet there. Um, certainly it will learn over time by the kinds of posts that people take down and I imagine it will be better, frankly, at some point. Um, but today this is still a little bit of technology. Um, technology helping the moderators move quickly, pulling up their posts, um, uh, uh, human review of the moderators, and then people uh, who are experts and who have ties to the various uh, communities um, shaping these policies. Again, understanding how in each culture, in each country, they're different. So uh, it's hard to see some of these stories because I, I usually see these things and I'm like, there's an answer. You know, here, this company should have done this better. I see this and I say, well, I guess you need more people. More people are being hired in every one of these companies. Um, technology needs to be trained up. It's certainly not there. But I think we also need to understand that this is never going to be perfect, um, that being too heavy handed uh, is perhaps almost as bad, if not worse, than being too tolerant here. Um, leveraging as much as possible the ability of people to decide who they interact with. Um, Facebook is far better an environment than Twitter because frankly, other than when you're in large groups, you generally are interacting with your friends, your friends of friends. And even when you're in large groups, there are moderators in there who very often can set their own tone and they can decide, well, I don't care what Facebook standards are. Here we talk about this topic or we don't ever say these words. Uh, and if you don't like it, go start your own group, right? And so you have a little bit more um, um, editorial control in some way by people who step up as moderators and set the tone. I'm the moderator of the uh, of a listserv in my community, and I decide the rules. And um, uh, sometimes people don't like it, um, but I'm spending the time. I'm using. Uh, if you want to, you know, send your message. We don't allow. Um, we, we allow some degree of marketing, but we don't allow too much. And I decide how much. Um, and so, to some degree, um, that's why Facebook 
is in a much better position here than, say, Twitter, where you see everything there is uh, if you follow, uh, and uh, there is no issue of the uh, content being selected for you or or, uh, uh, or moderated for you because you're in a certain group. Anyway, uh, good luck to uh, the uh, people who are running these moderation programs. They truly are the most challenging uh, public policy jobs there are. Uh, you need to respect civil liberties. You need to respect free speech. You need to respect different rules in different countries. Uh, you need to respect the sensitivities of the employees who are doing this. Um, uh, and uh, if our public sphere is going to succeed, we might want to spend a little bit more time thinking as well, not just about how the technology can kind of place the problem is, what is it that's turning some of us into raging lunatics online? Why do people act like this? How do people um, say these sorts of things, whether it's online or on cable TV? What failure in the institutions that create some sort of sense of civility? And I think, frankly, we spend a little bit more time looking at the technology because it's easy to say, hey, you fix it. And we don't really have a good answer for people who are spewing rage and uh, and hate. Uh, I'll end on a positive note. I, I saw that over the weekend, the uh, comedian Sarah uh, Silverman, uh, uh, somebody uh, called her a very offensive uh, term, just forward term. And she responded, and she didn't respond by blocking the person or by saying, you know, how dare you say this, you know, offensive uh, term. She said, you know, I went back through your feed and I see that you've been hurting. You've had a really hard uh, life uh, and you're obviously really angry. And, you know, he, he wasn't mollified right away, but they got into some conversation. And it turns out um, uh, they worked through and struck up a relationship and, and she was actually able to be uh, helpful to him. He actually had uh, a real problem with um, uh, some sort of back pain as a result of an injury. Now, look, every situation isn't going to work out like that, but it was charming heartening that her initial reaction wasn't, hey, you insulted me, I'll insult you back, or I'll report you, but was to get behind this person's uh, rage. And I wish I was aware of more efforts to engage and understand why people are, are frothing and angry. And some can't be helped, I understand that. But hey, if we're going to change the course of the next election, or if we're going to address the incivility that seems to be uh, existing in our discourse, we need to spend as much time complaining about technology as we also spend um, trying to understand how to deal with the root causes of what has us uh, interacting in, in this way. Anyway, uh, Melanie has posted in our comments the two articles I was uh, talking about, and I just wanted to give you a bit of the complexity from somebody who moderates a listserv. Uh, uh, who has played a role in this type of content moderation. Um, the big platforms earn a lot of money. There's a lot of people there. They need to put the resources to it. They seem to be. But anyone who expects perfection from this, um, I think, is going to have to be um, uh, very patient because I don't think it's achievable. We can and should have an environment where people are comfortable commenting and speaking. But to do that, it's going to be a combination of technology, of human review, and then work on what is the most important piece. How can we get society uh, and to deal with these divisions in a way that isn't uh, angry, hostile, and dangerous? Anyway, happy 2018.